A very good morning, good evening and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and welcome to another episode here Episode here on the Life as Signatures Radio. This is a daily podcast where I get to teach, I get to inspire, I get to motivate, I get to instruct. I know people logged off. Some people when they heard the word teach, they just like, ah, I'm out of here, man, I'm out of here. But that's okay because this podcast is not for everyone. It is for people who would like to know some things about purpose, about productivity, about resilience. Some people are looking for motivation. Some people are looking for inspiration in life. That's why I wake up every single day to do this. And I've got the privilege of doing it today where we are going to continue talking about Personal blockades. We've come quite a long way in this uh, series. We're talking about that aspect of personal blockade. What is a blockade? It is a limiting thing. It's something that limits us. And we are the ones who are limiting. We're the ones who are standing on our own way, one way or another, believing some things as if they are facts, but they are not. Thereby, whatever possibility could be there for our achievement, whatever potential we could have, We don't get to attain it because we have stood on our own way, erected a blockade because of one thing or another. Today, we're going to go deeper talking about cultural blockades. But first of all, got to do a recap. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. This is the recap. There are different types of blockades out there, and we've been discussing them one at a time. The first one we discussed was the mental blockade, and we went through different episodes, excuse me, talking about different ways we can approach the disempowerment of a mental blockade. How can we discombobulate, like that word, I got it from T.D. Jakes, how can we discombobulate the mental blockades that are erected in our lives. We talked about that in the previous episode. And then we jumped on to spiritual blockades. How can we also identify a spiritual blockade and so on? We talked about you and I being spirit. And it's not necessarily religious, but you and I being spirit. We actually say that sometimes religiosity can be a conduit of a personal blockade. You can't do some things because of religiosity. It hinders you. It stops you. It has stern warnings. Don't do this and don't do that. But now, starting yesterday, we came to talk about cultural blockades. And that's what we're going to dwell on in the next few episodes to come. Cultural blockades. And we started talking about this. We introduced this to you yesterday, saying that culture is one of the most readily automatically accepted things. We don't question it. Even though it could have a place where there is a blockade, we don't question it. I just asked a few questions, maybe just two questions yesterday. I asked, what does the culture of the day say about education? And in there, I tell you, there are very many blockades that have been put up. And I asked, what does the culture of the day say about leadership? Again, in there, there are blockades that have been put up. People don't take up leadership because they think it is hereditary. They falsely think it's hereditary. They falsely think that it's a gift. You've got to have a leadership gift. I have a different take on that one. There are people who have written books such as The 360 Leader. It's a guy who doesn't have a, 
a leadership position. 360 leader is written by John C. Maxwell. And then the leader who had no title is written by a man called Robin Sharma. And those are just two aspects of it. But culture could hinder success. When it comes to your success, what you believe, what you believe about your culture, or what your culture you are operating with, might be the one that is responsible for placing a blockade that will limit you from succeeding, limiting, limit you from getting to where you could get possibilities. So if I am operating in my life using someone else's instructions, because at times there is an element of culture being someone else's instructions to me, even though they are dead, you guy. If I'm operating in someone else's, uh, with someone else's uh, instructions in my life from the moment I was born, I could, not I am, I could be under a blockade, a cultural blockade in that matter. And in order to have, to be sure that we are not limiting ourselves in any way in our potential due to a cultural inclination it's an inclination, it's an automatic inclination. We've got to do some kind of tests and perform some tests. And I'm going to give us, let's say, four tests that we can be able to perform to find out, am I, five tests, am I culturally hindered? Or is there a hint or a possibility that in this area I am under a cultural blockade? So let us look at one test, test number one. I'm going to call it Routine versus Consistency. There's a very powerful book that has been written on the idea of consistency. It's called Atomic Habits by a man called James Clear. It's an atomic book, I can, I can guarantee you. He talks about routine. He talks about consistency. But most of the routine repetitive work that is being replaced today by robots and machines and AI even in the recent days most of this repetitive work so do you find yourself by the way this is the key word here is do you find yourself depending 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 that's the key word do you find yourself depending on doing routine tasks in order to be successful routine tasks in order to be successful and I ought to make a distinction here. One of the most fundamental pillars of success is actually consistency. If we juxtapose consistency and routine, what do we get? Consistency is a repetitive application of effort with a laser-like focus on an area of, of passion that will advance us in our success. That is consistency. Come rain, come shine, we do with it. Routine has a connotation of churning out you know, things by rot, whether you like it or not, uh, whether you understand it or not, uh, whether there is passion or energy, doesn't matter, it's routine. And in other words, they, there is less intentionality, or maybe you could do a routine without having intentionality in there. But consistency, there's discipline, there is planning, yeah, there is intentionality involved. Routine is a connotation of churning away tasks where your passion, your energy, your enthusiasm, your intentionality, they basically they are not applicable in there. Take for example, stamping letters. I, I know you guys are very young, you don't know what that is. In the olden days, there was no email, there was no internet. There were no computers to begin with. There were no mobile phones to begin with. There were even no phones. The best way of communicating was by post office. What does that mean? It means I'm going to go to a shop, I buy an envelope, and I buy a full scap, if you know what a full scap is, and I write my piece on that particular full scap, and then I address that full scap to another post office in another country or in another town with a, an address that has a box number. What is a box number? It's an allocation that people normally had on that particular post office. They will pay, they will rent a post office box. 
it, it pains me today that if you wanted to open a company in Uganda or in Africa somewhere, you have to have a post office box. <laughs> anyway, now that letter that I've just written addressing to that post office box, maybe to my girlfriend somewhere, has got to be charged and the way it's going to be charged for me to send it is by me buying postal stamps or postage stamps which are sold by the post office now the post office has got to make sure that those stamps are not going to be reused therefore they're going to stamp them so if you're employed uh, at the post office one of your duties one of your responsibilities will be to stamp letters so you wake up in the morning and you get a stamp you change the stamp it's basically like those guys who stamp your passport at the border but imagine this what you're stamping are letters you know you stamp you stamp the the whole day you're stamping you're stamping you're stamping so let me ask you a question is that consistency <laughs> or is that a routine what do you think i do think it's just a routine e, e, <laughs> another question Okay, is there any growth in the stamping of the letters, the envelopes, the stamps? As in, are you going to become the biggest or the best stamper in the country or in East Africa or in Africa? There is no element of growth <laughs> in that routine. That time that you're using to stamp could have otherwise been used to do something else more constructive that's why we don't have people stamping letters today it was a routine that has been replaced by technology see that's <laughs> that's what culture is consistent of it's consistent of routines we do routines without questioning repetitive routines the technology computers and all that stuff one of the when i was being taught uh, computers one of the advantages we used to mention about computers is that they can be able to do repetitive work without getting tired but a routine is made up of culture culture is made up of routines so if your culture is for routines chances are that you might be under some sort of blockade where you're doing things they are not growing you they are not serving you they are taking up your time they are repetitive and boring in nature you can't become better by doing those things but you've got to do them because they are routine some aspects of culture are routine so i'm gonna leave it to you to start looking around and find out what is this routine that maybe you have a routine that you're, you're doing okay uh, you have that catch of doing something and by the way let me just give it to it because sometimes some routines can be positive if you have a i don't want to call it a routine maybe you wake up in the morning and you go to meditate it becomes a consistent thing you do because when i say routine it means that you it's automatic you're not involved in it and so on and so forth routine is something that you don't have a say in okay maybe not necessarily have a say in it so there are some things that we are doing that we don't have a say in them they take up our time and they don't grow us those could be blockades and we need to find a way of replacing them Tomorrow we're going to look at another one but until then bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.